Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the CJRB Lago button lock knife. Very cool, very inexpensive, and it is available right now. I'll make sure and link it right down below so you guys can check it out. It does help my channel when you use those links, so I would appreciate it, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks so much to CJRB slash Artisan Cutlery for sending this in for me to take a look at. Excuse me. Thanks so much to my patrons who are supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. I am fighting a little bit of a face cold, so my voice might sound a little bit different, but I am otherwise okay. Thank you for your concern. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this knife. Uh, I thought this would be a lot smaller than it was, um, but uh, it's actually a full-size knife uh, coming in at eight inches and the blade length coming in at three and a half, cutting edge just a little over three inches. Let's go ahead and do just a few size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. So you can see here, um, it's it's right about in between, but definitely, I mean, it, it, it has all of the presence of a full-size knife. Uh, let's do the Demco AD 20.5. There we go. How about the Spyderco Para 3? Wonderful. And finally, the Benchmade bug outs. All right. How's the action on this guy? It is exactly what you want in a button lock knife. It has a little flipper um, and the flipper works. You push the button and it's got a shallow disengage, but still solid. You don't want the button to be sticking up too much. Um, number one, because it gets in the way. And number two, you don't, I, I don't like to, to feel all of the travel, right? Because there's, it's, I felt with uh, some Kaiser button locks where the button was really tall, there's just a long, crunchy travel, and it's, it's not very um, satisfying. This, it takes a deliberate, you know, uh, press of the button, but uh, pretty short, and then the blade will drop, and it will absolutely swing, right? That's what you want to see. Uh, the other thing it's got is this big opening hole right here, which allows you to either, you know, thumb flick it out or reverse flick it out which is just great. Everything works exactly the way that you would want it to, uh, and it's second nature. I have no complaints about the action whatsoever. Um, let's go ahead and do carry profile. Thickness up against the Spyderco Pair 3, it's about the same, perhaps a hair thicker. Length and height up against the PM2 and Pair 3. You can see here, this guy is a little bit longer than the Pair 3, a little shorter than the PM2. It's fairly tall, uh, including the flipper tab. It is almost the exact same height as the, the hump on the PM2 and Para 3, but not quite. Overall, though, it should be fairly easy to carry. What am I doing? <laughs> I was getting rid of this guy. Um, let's go ahead and talk about materials. We have G10 steel liners that have been milled out for weight reduction. I don't know if you can see that in there. Uh, and then for the blade steel, we have ARRPM9, which is fantastic considering the price, and we're going to talk about that soon. Let's go ahead and weigh it. Uh, weight on the CJRB Lago coming in at 4.41 ounces. So not perfect ratios, but still, I mean, 4.41, that's very close to what the Ritter Hogue weighs. In fact, the Ritter Hogue is a little bit more. Um, yeah, I, I really don't have a problem with that. Balance on this guy is just about exactly where you're going to put your index finger in the standard position. So holding it, it doesn't feel that heavy. Uh, truthfully, you know, I think most people are just not going to have a problem with that. But if you're used to carrying smaller knives, then this might feel a little large to you. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'm going to get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. We have a T8 pivot, just one side. That, that uh, pivot, as far as I can tell, is captive as well. We also have T8 body screws, which... Um, is not something we normally see from CJRB. They just love T6, but this time we have T8. Everything except for the pocket clip screws. So thank you, thank you CJRB for doing that. Just a couple of screws. It actually should be very simple to take this thing apart. Minimal hardware, and in my opinion, the correct size of fasteners, that's fantastic. No complaints there. Let's go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes of this knife review. Um, we have seen a lot of button locks, right? I mean, the, the button lock fad is upon us. And I like fads. You know, when something works and it becomes popular, then we get to see a whole bunch of different variations. Some, sometimes the people are just like automatically anti-fad, like stupid popular stuff. 
I'm I'm different. I like stuff that's not. Po- I'm just kidding. If you, I mean, you know, if you take an automatic, almost robotic stance against stuff like that, then it's kind of eh, my natural reaction is kind of an eye roll towards you, right? If you genuinely like certain things and don't like other things, then not nat- just natural progression through life would would you know. Uh, uh, basically show that sometimes you would enjoy fads and sometimes you would not enjoy fads, right? I feel like a lot of times when I hear people complaining about fads, it's like, you're the type of person that will complain about it no matter what, even if it's something that you like, right? So consider, like, do I actually like? For me, some fads I do like, some fads I don't, right? This is one that I do. I'm really happy that we have lots of button locks to enjoy, right? I mean, there's a crap load of them. Um, this is, uh, and and we've had examples of good ones and bad ones, right? So after having handled so many different types of them, I've kind of figured out like what makes a good button lock. And I'm really happy to say that this, uh, is exactly that. I mean, it's kind of like what I was talking about with the action. Um, it's just kind of second nature. Uh, it works exactly the way that you'd want. It's very fidgety, right? And it's very easy. The nice thing about a button lock is it's extremely utilitarian. The whole idea with a pocket knife is that it is a a tool, you know, a, a simple tool of opportunity, right? It's just something that you pull out, make a quick cut, and put it away, right? That's the whole idea. So uh, whatever you can do to minimize the steps between, you know, when the knife is in your pocket, out of your pocket, making the cut, right, and then fold it back up and put back in your pocket, whatever you can do to simplify that process is just, it's going to be... Um, you know, the best, the best way to go. It, it, it's going to be optimized. Um, and with this knife, it's literally pull, <laughs> uh, you're going to pull the knife from your pocket, right? You're going to flip it out. You're going to make the cut, push the button. Ideally, the blade will fall right back into the handle the moment that you release the button, keeping the blade in the handle, and you're going to put it away. It's, um, it's about as straightforward as it gets, right? There's very few knives that have fewer steps, right? Um, and even knives that have the same amount of steps, a lot of them are just clunky. Like, for example, a slip joint or a lockback, right? You could you could make an argument. It's the same number of steps. It's way clunkier to screw around with a lockback, try to get it back in your pocket. Um, the only knives that I can think of that are legitimately faster with fewer steps would be like an OTF, right? A knife that switch, you push the button or you, you push the switch forward, fires the blade out, and then retracts back into the handle. Um, these are great. This is why I love button locks. I truly love ED seeing them. And this is a great example. Ergonomically, I also really like this. In the standard position, it's great. The pocket clip is actually fairly well done. It's not my a favorite style of clip in the whole world, but the bill is fairly shallow and it's rounded off, which means you can feel it, but it's not digging into your hand. It's like, not like gnawing into your palm, like a lot of other pocket clips that we see in this territory. Pretty comfortable. Edges are nicely knocked down. The liners are just ever so slightly shadow boxed. You can see the steel reflecting around the G10. This is nice because you get to see that, but it's so subtle that you don't really feel it. Um, I'll give you a look here at the edges of the G10 and the steel, and you can see here, really, there's nothing rough. The only rough area is the peel ply texturing, and it's not aggressive. It's exactly the right level of texturing to offer grip without, you know, shaving dead skin off of your fingers. The choil is actually fairly roomy. Usually I'm, you know, I'm kind of like, eh, why did they put the flipper tab on there? That's just in the way of the choil. And truthfully, they probably could have gotten rid <coughs> of the um, flipper tab on this guy and it would have been even better. But you know what? It, I can't really say it's in the way because I can get my second knuckle in here and still feel like I'm, you know, safely behind that edge. So, you know, if you like flipper tabs and you also like roomy choils, there you go. It works, right? And then this area right here is so beautifully open. I mean, no matter what, no matter how fat your fingers are, you're going to be able to get them in there and use it however you like to use it, right? The blade is a simple satin finished blade, but you know what? They did a good job with it, says CJRB. More of a sheep's foot style. It's just got an elongated tip so you can still do puncture tasks. The edge has a little bit of belly. It actually tapers down to a pretty darn thin cutting edge. um, And the whole thing just looks great. I mean, there are no, you know, wonky edges. There's no uneven, uh, you know, like the apex, uh, the final uh, cutting bevel is even all the way down to the tip on both sides. Really, really great. AR RPM 9, basically powder formed 9CR18 MOV steel, which is fantastic. 
Uh, it's going to be decent edge retention. It's going to be pretty darn easy to sharpen. Good toughness and great corrosion resistance. Uh, it's uh, it's one of the better choices in this territory. I mean, truthfully, it is one of the best choices uh, for an EDC steel out there. It's really, I mean, whether you are a, you know, a veteran of the knife world or you're somebody who's brand new, um, this is pretty much what you want in a knife like this, right? Unless you have some sort of specialized occupation that would require sort of an imbalance of the four cornerstones of knife steel composition, right? Um, but this is a good uh, balanced composition for general EDC. You can get them with coated blades if you want to. There's actually quite a few different color combinations. I like this one, black uh, with the red pivot collar and the satin blade. It looks good. I would have preferred a tumbled finish, but you know, you can't always get what you want. The pivot collar is a nice touch. It breaks up the <coughs> otherwise extremely basic look of the knife. They are not reinventing the wheel with this profile here. It is a profile that we have seen many times. Whenever you have a super common profile, you have people screaming out that it's a copy of the, eh, I'm certain that someone has already said it's a copy of the, um, the, the Pilar or Pilar, um, which is hilarious to me. Um, it's, it's just, a, it's just a common knife profile. Um, so, you know, it's not, uh, it's not anything we haven't seen before, but it's not necessarily, you know, copying anything directly. Um, we have a lanyard hole. So that's great if you're a lanyard person, right? A um, couple of standoffs here, just standoff construction, that's fine. Um, the pocket clip can be mounted for left-handed carry. It's like I always say with button locks, I think they're actually button locks that are, you know, set up for right-handed, like I think most people are going to call this a right-handed button lock uh, knife where you use your thumb to disengage it. Lefties, you guys get to use your index finger, which I got to say feels even more natural. <laughs> this is incredibly easy to manipulate with my left hand. I love button locks for this reason. They are almost perfectly ambidextrous. It's just a different experience with your left hand. But I just, I love it, you know, and, and I'm, I would imagine most lefties actually really love it too. If you are bearing down on this knife in the standard position, you will not disengage that button. If you are bearing down on it in the choked up position, there is a slight chance that one of your fingers could potentially, it takes a pretty specific movement, but you could potentially squeeze it and disengage that button lock. That's something that we have to pay attention to with all button locks. Left-handed people, kind of the same story. I'm gonna squeeze as hard as I can and see if that wants to disengage. Yep, if you are squeezing hard enough and you're choked up, there's a chance you could disengage it. Be aware of that. That's just one of those things that's really hard to avoid when you know people are designing button locks. If you're squeeze, here's the thing. If you're gonna bear down on this knife, bear down on it in the standard position, right? If you're gonna choke up on it, be cognizant of where this part of your hand is. Don't let it lay over the button, right? I wouldn't do any heavy pressure choked up cuts with this thing, uh, with either hand. I would do minor little detail work, right? If you're gonna apply a lot of pressure, make sure that you're not bringing your fingers down on top of that button or your palm down if you're left-handed, right? Do, you know, save those heavy pressure cuts for the standard hammer grip position. Um, let's see here. Lock up, where is the stop pin located? Here it is right here, pretty standard, straightforward. No shouldering, no blade play, up, down, left, right. That's always great to see with a plunge lock. Um, you know, it used to be that I would just expect to get blade play with a plunge lock up, down, and left and right. Solid, solid. No lock stick off of this button. I'm really impressed with that. Uh, your experience may vary, right? This was sent to me directly by CJRB, so maybe they sent me a really, really good one. Uh, no pivot lash, extremely consistent and smooth action in here. Nice, it's not a detent, right? It's really just it falling over the ledge so that the plunge lock can fall into place. Um, but it feels good. The nice and nice um, sort of, you know, engagement here in the closed position. And then the centering is perfect. Little tiny bit of detent lash, but it's not really detent lash. It's just movement off of the, off the plunge lock. I don't know if I really want to complain about that, right? But just being honest, this knife is 50 bucks. Um, yeah. Are you, are you kidding me? Yes. <laughs> the value is off the charts here with this thing. CJRB knocked it out of the park. Uh, it's not the first time they have done that with a button lock, right? Uh, they have the pyrite. I'm sure that they'll have more. 
This is excellent. If you look at the pirate and you're like, yeah, cool, it just looks really plain. There's not a lot of personality in it, right? Or maybe you just want something a little bit bigger. Um, maybe you want something with a little bit more roomy choil. Here you go. This is extremely recommendable for you, for a, a gift for somebody else. I mean, that's the thing about these knives. It, it's pretty much like one attempt at manipulating this thing, no matter who you are. Your grandma, who doesn't carry a pocket knife, could figure this out in five seconds. It is utilitarian. It is about as safe as you could want a pocket knife to be, right? Edge geometry is great. Materials are great. Overall fit and finish and quality, great. Just awesome. Like, this is just a great knife all the way around. Uh, yeah, buy this knife. You will not regret it. I'm going to put it on my most recommended knives playlist as well as my cheap knives I like playlist because it is a budget knife. It is under $75. Um, so feel free to check out those playlists if you'd like. But this is highly recommendable. That's going to be pretty much it today, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have... Lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.